The James Webb Space Telescope will shed light on the riddle of dark matter. It's possible that the hunt for dark matter is also a hunt for the world's oldest black holes. Let's dive in quickly. According to the findings of a new study that investigates an old notion that has recently made a reappearance, dark matter might actually be made up of long-defunct black holes. During the course of the following year, observations made by the James Webb Space Telescope, which was only recently put into operation by NASA, may provide hints that the early cosmos contained a great number of black holes. It's possible that these data could explain the gravitational effects that dark matter has. The term weakly interacting massive particles refers to hypothetical particles that are huge, move slowly, and are heavy. These particles are used to explain dark matter in a number of particle physics models because they are thought to pull on conventional matter via gravity. However, according to Benjamin Lehman, a physicist and PhD candidate at the University of Santa Cruz who researches dark matter and particle physics, but was not engaged in the study. That explanation has been in growing tension with recent experimental results. Lemon was not a part of the study. As a result, the community of particle physicists has been eager to investigate more options for dark matter, including reviewing older theories in the context of new models. In the early 1970s, Stephen Hawking made the bold prediction that tight pockets in the extremely hot and condensed early cosmos could have given rise to the universe's initial black holes. Because the large-scale structure of the universe is the result of tiny fluctuations in the moments immediately following the Big Bang, the creation of black holes at the dawn of time, also known as primordial black holes, relies on a fundamental fact. This fact is that the Big Bang was the catalyst for the creation of the universe. According to this idea, pockets of these fluctuations would reach a critical density, making them ready to become black holes. But the enormous heat that would be surrounding them would prevent them from collapsing instantly. According to Gunter Heisinger, director of science at the European Space Agency, as well as a specialist in X-ray astronomy and author of the new study to be published in the Astrophysical Journal, Particles were so hot that they were zipping around like crazy. This prevented them from collapsing into black holes until the universe expanded and cooled down enough to allow for it. The findings of this study will be published in the journal. According to Heisinger, this collapse wouldn't take place until elementary particles known as quarks were able to combine into protons. This process would have started when the universe was only a fraction of a second old. According to Nico Capaluti, an astrophysicist at the University of Miami who served as the head researcher on the project. The group's primary objective was to determine whether or not this new cosmology of primordial black holes could have been responsible for the formation of the universe as we know it today. According to their hypothesis, a universe in which primordial black holes function as dark matter could have an appearance that is comparable to our own. According to Lemon, primordial black holes and dark matter are not incompatible with one another in any way. Primordial black holes have been hypothesized to be a type of dark matter. According to him, it is astonishing how many different scientific hypotheses could be investigated using only this one model, and the research procedures used in the study were very thorough. The model developed by the group predicts that stars began to form after approximately 50 million years, which is significantly sooner than the mainstream model's prediction of 300 million years. According to Capaluti, if scientists were to take a closer look at the remote and ancient parts of the universe, they might be able to resolve this disparity. The James Webb Telescope, which was created to investigate signals from more than 13.5 billion years ago, has the potential to bridge the gap between Hawking's theory, which dates back decades, and the concept of dark matter. Heisinger explains that physicists didn't have a genuine sense of scale when Stephen Hawking first presented the concept of primordial black holes, because they believed the newly formed black holes would be rather modest in size. Scientists spent the years that followed looking for the gamma rays that would have been generated by such black holes. When they didn't locate them, the majority of researchers put the concept on the back burner for decades. It wasn't until much later that scientists realized primordial black holes might come in a broad variety of sizes, including some that were significantly heavier. According to Heisinger, the concept of primordial black holes acquired a lot of support after the first gravitational wave detections. These detections demonstrated that black holes were heavier than scientists had anticipated. 
According to Capaluti, even with the most advanced telescopes available today, scientists still have a large gap in their understanding of how the early cosmos worked. Astronomers have only been able to piece together the past 13 billion years of the universe's history, despite the fact that the cosmos is around 14 billion years old. According to them, the missing billion years are filled with a lot of unresolved mysteries, such as how we ended up with black holes that are so huge that their mass is billions of times that of the Sun. With the level of physics knowledge that experts now possess, it is challenging to explain how these supermassive black holes came to being. Hastinger is certain that the James Webb Telescope will see stars, if they exist, in the black region of space known as the Deep Field. This is the same region of space where the Hubble Space Telescope discovered a multitude of the oldest galaxies ever observed for the first time. In the event that this takes place, it will most certainly take place within a few short months after the observatory begins operations. According to Capaluti, James Webb will open that window into an era of history that occurred in the far past. If it turns out that proto-galaxies were far more common than was anticipated, then the quantity of proto-galaxies and the characteristics of those proto-galaxies could be a good indicator of whether or not primordial black holes exist. According to Capaluti, however, the smoking gun will most likely be a future observation of gravitational waves from a primordial black hole. According to Lehman, the chance that James Webb may put the author's model to the test is an interesting possibility. In spite of this, he is of the opinion that this will not fully settle the question of whether dark matter is formed of primordial black holes. According to Hasinger, scientists often do not attempt to demonstrate that their hypotheses are correct. Rather, they propose a hypothesis and then work to shut it down. The more unsuccessful attempts there are to disprove a hypothesis, the more credible it appears to be. If it is not possible to disprove the idea, then it will continue to exist, at least until the subsequent generation of trials and discoveries. The impending findings could represent a significant turning point in the hunt for primordial black holes, regardless of whether or not the team's theory is proven incorrect. According to Hassinger, then we would be in trouble if scientists study the deepest web observations and don't see an indication of a departure from the standard model. Thanks for watching this video to the end. Let us know in the comments what you think about this new input on the dark matter theory thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope. Did you find this video interesting? Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more. We have another interesting video ready for you. Click on it, and we'll take you on the next space adventure. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.